I'm Batman! That's why my voice is like shot. Like, today we have a special, special episode for you guys. Um, I'm going to be doing this whole, whole scene. I'm Batman! So you got the mask on. Alright. We're doing this whole special scene with Port Covey. This is Peter and the Wolf. This is a classic, but um, it's going to be, it's 26 minutes, so it's going to be in segments. And again, I have to apologize about my voice. I was scanning trick or treaters last night, and uh, yeah, I've never been zombie Batman again. Opening song Batman Beyond Beam. Okay, the digging was incredibly backed up this morning. We don't know why. I think it was probably the rain, of course. It, it's funny how last year there was a hurricane around this time. I mean, a hurricane on last time this year. But uh, speaking of which, that's what the dolphins reminded me of. Remember, like last year, there's this whole crazy thing where the dolphins invaded the campus. There's this whole thing. What did they want? They, they complained about Chartwell's food or something. But that was, that was a whole other issue. And then it turns out they were only trying to warn us about the hurricane. Um, well, they kind of like sent me a little message. You said something was up today. Something. And this is just like what they were trying to tell us. It involves the Deegan somehow. It's an important and popular fact that things are not always what they seem. For instance, on the planet Earth, man had always assumed that he was the most intelligent species occupying the planet, instead of the third most intelligent. The second most intelligent creatures were, of course, dolphins, who, curiously enough, had long known of the impending destruction of the planet Earth. They had made many attempts to alert mankind to the danger, but most of their communications were misinterpreted as amusing attempts to punch footballs or whistle for tidbits. So they eventually decided they would leave Earth by their own means. The last ever dolphin message was misinterpreted as a surprisingly sophisticated attempt to do a double backward somersault through a hoop while whistling the Star Spangled Banner. But in fact, the message was this. So long, and thanks for all the fish. So, yeah, that was just a whole recap. But we're going to get into Progroff. Again, this is 26 minutes. This is Peter and the Wolf. This is going to be very exciting for me. I finally found this 
there's this like theme, this like I would hum it right now, but I my voice is so bad. Let me try humming it. So it just doesn't. But yeah, I've been looking for that theme for like 20 years, and I finally found it. Anyway, I'd just like to recap on what happened with uh, the Three Sisters play. It is worth it. You gotta go see it, even if it's. I was given this big deal about how it was a 10-minute quiz compared to a three-hour play, and everybody just chose the three-hour play. But anyway, so yes, it is worth it. It was awesome. I talked about um, how like these three women, and then the whole family issue, and how people were gambling, and then one guy and one girl like gets knocked up for like obvious reasons because it's a rich family. And uh, then she starts having an affair, and it's just a whole sad thing. And then they have to like mortgage the house. Uh, oh, wait, I'm spoiling everything for you guys. Okay, so great play, you gotta see it. My favorite character was that old guy who everybody said he's too, he has to act, stop acting like a kid, act your age. And then there's this one scene where he gets really drunk and says that people don't exist, and that was just really creepy and awesome. But um, before I get into Peter and the Wolf. I have like some trailers of upcoming videos to show you, as well as the Simpsons Hobbit Gouch Keg. Um, so this is an upcoming movie coming up, the Lego movie in 2014, and this is exciting, and you will see why once I play it. It, it, it looks like the most awesome movie ever, honestly. No why? I'm Emmett. I'm just gonna come right out. I have no idea what's going on. At all. My fellow master builders, including, but not limited to, Superman, Wonder Woman, The Mermaid, Green Ninja, 1980-something Space Guy, Hello. Michelangelo, Michelangelo, and the 2002 NBA All-Stars. We have learned that Lord Business plans to end the world as we know it. <gasps> there is yet one hope. The special has arisen. I think I got it, but just in case, tell me the whole thing again, I wasn't listening. Sometimes very, very dark gray. Awesome. Batman! Yeah! Awesome! That's why I played the trailer, obviously. Alright, right. Let's get into Peter and the Wolf. I know you're all dying to see Peter and the Wolf. Why is this so important? It was a child's play that I, I heard back in my St. Barnabas days. No one's talking to the chat feed. That's okay, that's cool. Alright. Peter and the Wolf. This is a classic. I'm surprised I found it. I'm going to tell you the story of Peter and the Wolf. If you listen carefully, you'll observe that each character in this tale is represented by a different instrument of the orchestra. For instance, the bird by the flute. Duck by the elbow. The cat by the clarinet. Father by the pursuit. The 
wolf by the three horns. by the string quartet and the rifle shots by the kettle drum and the big drum. Early one morning, Peter opened the gate and went out into a big green meadow. Okay guys, so the news is I'm getting updates from the Dolphins on my cell phone. It would have been nice if they called in, but the number calling is 718-405-3456. Once again, 718-405-3456. But I'm getting updates from the Dolphins on my cell phone, and they're, they're giving me updates right now. So until then, um, I'll play you the Hobbit thing from The Simpsons, the new Hobbit trailer, Couch Gag. This is going to look awesome, by the way. Get your own coach. Okay, guys, disturbing news. You're not going to believe this. Apparently, zombies are trafficking the Deegan. That's why we're so delayed. There is a zombie apocalypse amongst us. These zombies will eat people's brains. It's, it's, it's happening. They said it would never happen, but it's actually happening. Zombies! What are we gonna do? I mean, like these doors, well, the radio door locks, so I'm good, but you go to the library, those doors don't lock. The zombie contagion, or the zombie monsters are spreading. It's a zombie 
apocalypse. That's what the Dolphins have just warned me. I'm going to go back to Peter and the Wolf right now to figure out what's going on. Until then, listen to Peter and the Wolf, okay? On the branch of a big tree sat a little bird, Peter's friend. All is quiet, chirped the bird gaily. She was glad that Peter had not closed the gate and decided to take a nice swim in the deep pond in the meadow. down upon the grass, settled next to the duck and shrugged her shoulders. What kind of a bird are you if you can't fly, said she. To this the duck replied, well what kind of a bird are you if you can't swim and dived into the pond. Okay, I am back. I'm doing research right now on these so-called zombies, these zombies, these, these undead people who are ravaging the world. Here's Call of Duty Black Ops music. <sighs> zombies are real. All right, it turns out it's possible. Yes, it is possible. Let's do some research on the so What does Wikipedia have to say about zombies? A zombie? is an animated corpse raised by magical means. The term is often figuratively applied to describe a hypnotized person, bereft of consciousness and self-awareness, yet ambulant and able to respond to surrounding stimuli. Since the late 19th century, zombies have acquired notable popularity in special North American European folklore. Africa, according to the West African tenets of voodoo, a dead person can be revived by a bokar or sorcerer. Zombies remain under control of the bokar since they have no will of their own. Zombie is also another name of the voodoo snake, Twaidama Wadu or Nigger Kongigno origin. It's an akin to the Kirban and Nazaban, which means God. You also exist with the West African voodoo tradition, the zombie Astro. In 1907, while researchers spoke in Haiti, Sorrel Neil Hartson encountered a case of a woman who appeared in a village, and a family claimed she was Felicia Felix's mentor, a relative who had died and been buried in the age of 29. However, the woman had been examined by a doctor who found on x ray that she did not have the lead fracture that Felix's mentor was known to have had. 
The real life fortress home was safety from the zombie apocalypse. Huffington Post. This was 10 hours ago. If or when the zombie apocalypse finally happens, you have two options for living arrangements. You can either go deep underground or you can ride out the mayhem in the comfort of your fortress home. We'll go through that later. Thankfully, such an option already exists. Note the mental walls that save you from Wyatt, which can left to expose full length windows that will let you see the damage done to our civilization, and you sip contemporary from a sniffer of brandy. Okay, these look. Walking Dead, that was some cool thing or something. I only saw the first episode. Five scientific reasons a zombie apocalypse could happen. Um, I'm gonna read this to make sure it's safe. And tell them, let's go back to Peter and the Wolf. The duck swimming in the pond, the little bird hopping along the shore. Suddenly, something caught Peter's attention. He noticed a cat crawling through the grass. arguing. I'll just grab her. Stealthily she crept towards her on her velvet paws. Look out, shouted Peter, and the bird immediately flew up into the tree. While the duck quacked angrily at the cat. From the middle of the pond. Okay, I'm still reading this. We're just going to go play, I guess, one of my plan clips earlier. And I'll, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Buckle up, boys. This jump leads to space. And that's really high. talk to you about something extremely troubling. See? The ocean is safe again! Awkward. Do you know how hard it is to actually scalp someone? Of course I do. I'm kind of looking forward to Saturday night. Cop, why did you just poison all the guests? So I could kill them. Clearly. That was on the Animation Domination High Def YouTube page, Fox ADHD. I found this thing where I'm going to learn from, like, Left 4 Dead 2, which zombie apocalypse are. That's what I'm going to do. But first, the five scientific reasons a zombie could happen. I found out recently that if you try to leave a little kid in the graveyard late at night, he'll freak out. Even if you offer to leave him a gun to protect... Well, of course he's going to freak out! 
Why? It's because of some instinctive level. All humans know it's just a matter of time until the zombies show up. A culture is full of tales of the undead walking the earth, from our legend to our comic books. But some sort of zombie apocalypse isn't actually possible. Right? Right, guys. Actually, yes, it's quite possible. Here's five ways it could happen according to science. I've seen Resident Evil 5. Parasites that turn victims into mindless zombie-like slaves are fairly common in nature. There's one called Toxoplasma gundi that seems to default its entire existence to being terrifying. The bug infects rats but can only breed inside the intestines of a cat. The parasite known as needs to get the rat inside the cats. Yes, we realize this sounds like the beginning of the most Dr. Seuss poem ever. So the parasite takes over the rat's freaking brain and intentionally makes it scurry towards where the cats hang out. The rat is being programmed to get itself eaten and it doesn't even know. Um... All right, um, rats, it's confused. How can result in zombies? Hey, do you mention that half the human population on Earth is infected with Toxoplasma and don't know it? What? Do you have done studies that show that infected see a change in the personality of a higher? What is Toxoplasma? Half of the world's human pop parasites in the body and the brain, remember that. Gondai or parasite found in guts of cats. It sheds eggs that are picked up by rats and other animals that can be eaten by cats. Cysts in the body of the host, including the brain, since cats don't want to eat dead, decaying prey. Toxoplasma takes the evolutionary sound cause of being a good parasite, leaving the rats perfectly healthy. The minds and the effect of rats have been suddenly altered in a series of experiments. They demonstrate that healthy rats will prudently avoid areas that have beaten urine. Doctors and scientists test anxiety, anxiety drugs in rats to use a whiff of cat urine to induce neurologic panic. I, I still don't know what this is. I, I still don't know what this is. Zombies changes to the zombie apocalypse. Taking forever such as a parasite to evolve. You're forgetting about all the biological weapons programs around the world and intentionally weaponizing such bugs. Toxoplasma. I don't think this actually is how the zombies are attacking a deacon. It's what I'm aware of at this point right now is the zombies have indeed taken over known as pizzeria. So don't go eating pizza there right now. I mean, I, I don't know. The zombies are known as pizzeria. Just say, unless you want zombie pizza, don't eat a known as pizzeria. Proving the Irish family was genocide by the British. I wonder if this will help us at all. Not for nothing, the okay. The most significant section of Tim Pat Cogan's new book on the Irish family is not his own writing, but the spreading of the United Nations defending on genocide. The family plot published by Palgrave Macmillan it was released in America as last week, and Cogan should have here to launch it, but in a separate but equally confounding plot. He was denied a fees to come here by the American Embassy in Dublin. The conclusion of this book is almost fickle. Ireland's most prominent story who has recently created definite portraits of from both Michael Collins and Aaron de Fellery has now pointed that finger squarely at the British story and the British family and stated it was genocide. It is a big change, but Goham is a big man physically, intelligently, and in every sense it makes a very effective accusation. Back in the famine time, the same potato crop disease occurred most heavily in Scotland, outside Ireland, yet there were relatively few casualties as the landowners of the government ensued for their own sakes as much as anything that were no mass debt. That was not the case in Ireland, where a very different mentality prevailed. The dang Irish were going to get what they deserved because of their attachment to Catholicism and Irish ways, the way refusing to tow to the British line. Protesting Catholics were freely fail in the land will be for the survivors. Shortly after he was in charge of a policy that brought that situation about. One telephone story and one quote suffice. British Coast Guard Inspector General Sir James Darwin when he said starving paupers ordered his suburbs to get free food handouts for his attempts to feed the starving. Darwin was publicly rebuked by Trevelyan. Trevelyan quote is the real evil with which we have to contend it's not the physical evil of the famine, but the moral evil of the selfish, perverse, and turbulent character of the people. Okay, this has nothing to do with the zombies. The zombies are just evil. Don't zombies be want to eat our brains. Let me get back to Peter and the Wolf for now. Crawled 
around the tree and thought, is it worth climbing up so high? By the time I get there, the bird will have flown away. Just then, Grandpapa came out. He was angry because Peter had gone to the meadow. It is a dangerous place. If a wolf should come out of the forest, then what would you do? Peter paid no attention to Grandfather's words. Boys like Peter are not afraid of wolves. Grandfather took Peter by the hand, led him home, and locked the gate. had Peter gone, then a big grey wolf came out of the forest. Okay guys, Brajan just came in here, and I thought she was going to lead me to the zombies, but no, it's, she's, I don't think she knows about the zombies either. Right, I'm going to go and talk about this thing I found out about the, this blog, I mean, Talk about zombies here. It's the New York's. Oh, Brickleberries are nude. That's cool. Comedy Central has picked up sophomore anime comedy Brickleberry for a 13 episode third season prepared by 2014. Okay, that's awesome. The season six of seasons. The second season of Brickleberry, which revolves around a group of dysfunctional park rangers at a second entire national park, is averaging 1.6 million viewers and it's number one in all of television and its time slot with. Men 18 to 24. Its season finale airs November 26. Brickleberry Creative, executive producer by Weko Graham and Roger Black, features a voice cast include Natasha Lecure, Tom Kenny, Dave Henman, and Tosh as Malloy. Brickleberry is produced by Fox 21. The animation is produced by Bento Box. Okay, but that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the New York City Clash. It's this whole thing where the spawn, the 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 race smoking the twenty one, and this. Oh man, I won't be able to find it. It's this whole thing how the mayor, like we we supported the mayors, we supported candidates, and then he turned on the, the backs on us by saying that we're too dumb, we're idiots to not understand smoking, so we have to raise the age, and we supported them. So yeah. It's kind of crazy. That's why I was for Mayor Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie should have been the next mayor of New York. I don't think she would have cared about smoking. I'm going to go play a new clip for American Dad for you. And, oh, wait, do you have a Happy Halloween? No, it's the same one we saw there at Happy Animation Domination Scream.
you can make your own Roger mask. Here it is, Klaus and Roger highlights from this November. This is going to be cool. The November Fox rushes to the end zone with massive television events, series premieres, and season finales, as well as in all new episodes with big guest stars, including the two part season finale, Master Chef Junior, November Animation Domination High Def. All right, Mondays, two Mondays. This is just Monday. Oh, here it is. No, Tuesdays. This is just Tuesdays. It's just one of the days. The X Factor. What is the X Factor? Thursdays, the X Factor again. If Friday the X Factor's on, I'm going to scream. Nope, not. Good evening, the X Factor is on. Saturdays, Fox Sports, Fox Sports, Fox Sports. Oh, animation nomination, high def. Cool. Here is Sunday. Bob's Burgers. Uh, rerun, the flippity flop rerun. The Simpsons. Four Gordon and a funeral. From the funeral of a beloved neighbor, four Springfielders are promoted to try and right past wrongs. Homer regrets selling his apple stock to buy a bowling ball. Marge worries she caused Bart's rebellious streak. Mr. Burns reminisces about a romance he gave up with a beautiful Parisian woman. And Kent Brockman admits he was too afraid to leave local news and follow his former partner Raquel Maddo to cable news. Also, guest voices himself. Stalin in a football. Bob's Burger Seaplane. Linda is bored by Bob's tired attempts at date night and decides to sign up for flying lessons. When Quagmire meets a woman named Sonia, who is sexually instable as he is, he is thrilled to finally be with someone who won't judge him. However, things take a turn for the worse when Sonia adopts Quagmire. The finally, American Dad sets off to prove his manhood. Steve sets off to prove off his manhood by joining Stan, Bullock, and the rest of the CAA on their annual hunting trip. And this is supposed to be. Sunday, November 3rd. But I heard something about The Simpsons and Edna Krabappel, unfortunately. I'll get to you that soon. Then I'll get to the zombie... The zombie left for dead. Because that's what I should be concerned about now instead of focusing on cartoons. But um, until then, here's Peter and the Wolf. The duck quacked and in her excitement jumped right out of the pond. But no matter how hard the duck tried to run, she couldn't escape the wolf. He was getting nearer, nearer, catching up with her, and suddenly he got her. And with one gulp, swallowed her down. The zombies are here. They are on campus. What do they want? This is crazy. Zombies are invading the campus. It, last year was dolphins. Before that was aliens. What is it with these? With, with my college? I don't know. I think I see zombies actually wandering outside. This is creepy. They're right outside the window. I can see them. Uh, and this is to put down the blind or something. I don't know. I 
Okay, here it is. Statement from executive producer Al Jean on behalf of The Simpsons. I was tremendously saddened to learn this morning of the passing of the burning gracious Maurice Wallace. She was beloved by all of The Simpsons, and we intend to retire her a replaceable character. We're only going to discuss the potential storyline in which her character passed away. This was not Mercia's Edna Krabappel. Mercia's passing is unrelated and again a terrible loss for all who have the pleasure of knowing her. Um, this one's going to be sad. Paid tributes, details, and the Krabappel is gone. Just sad. Plans this sun. Oh, this Sunday. So whatever episode the, we just talked about is not going to be on. It's an, it's in our episode. Oh, the replacing repeat of American Dad with a classic Simpsons episode. They focused on Wallace's beloved character. Okay, so they changed up the lineup for this. This is the episode where Bart and Bart like does this eight dating thing with Edna. It's this whole thing. Again, this is going to be this Sunday if we survive the zombie apocalypse. So yeah. Now, the zombie apocalypse. Left for Dead 2, it, it had this whole thing with McDonald's. This was by You Always Win. It's having trouble loading. Hey everyone, welcome back to some zombies at McDonald's. What? Yeah, yeah, did it, did it, did it. We're killing them. Give me Big Mac. Big Mac. Mm, big Mac. I wonder Apple if they're going to want a large size their fries. Excuse me, Mr. Tank. Do you want to supersize that order of fries? I think you do. <laughs> I like the milkshakes. <laughs> me like the milkshake. <laughs> Zombies ate my neighbors at McDonald's. Mm, that is delicious. not good. I always wondered what they put in their patties. You, they probably put zombie brains in there. You never know. You never yep. know. Come on, zombie. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh, hello. I hear zombies knocking or something. I don't know. Never mind. Look at those burgers in the background. What kind of burgers are those? Those don't look like McDonald's burgers. They're zombie burgers. Zombie burger. All right. Um, I'm gonna place my order here. Take a look at the menu. You didn't even look at the menu. Four ninety five for a Big Mac combo. What? Look at that. Hamburger, cheeseburger, filet fish, crispy Burgers. chicken, quarter pounder, McCurry. McCurry pan. What Give me noise? back that filet fish. Give me that fish. Oh. I'm gonna get some. What if it were you hanging oh. up on that wall? Alright, this isn't telling me anything. I don't know how to survive the zombie apocalypse because of this. This was this was utter uselessness. Um Back to Peter and the Wolf. This is how things stood. The cat was sitting on one branch. The bird on another. Not too close to the cat. The wolf prowled around and around the tree, looking up at them with greedy eyes.
In the meantime, Peter, without the slightest fear, stood behind the closed gate, watching all that was going on. Then he ran home, took a strong rope and climbed up the high stone wall. One of the branches of the tree around which the wolf was prowling stretched out over the wall. Grabbing hold of the branch. Peter climbed over onto the tree. Do you guys hear that? The zombies are in the building. Do you hear that? It's driving me nuts. They're out there. They're evil. They want to eat our brains. Zombies. I'm scared. We're supposed to be Batman, but I'm a zombie Batman for Halloween. I mean, I'm not supposed to be a real zombie Batman, you know? I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm just scared here. Back to Peter and the Wolf. Peter said to the bird, fly down and circle around the wolf's head. Only take care that he doesn't catch you. almost touched the wolf's head with her wings while the wolf snapped at her from this side and from that. the wolf how he wanted to catch her but the bird was clever and the wolf simply couldn't do anything about it <laughs> meanwhile Peter made a lasso Carefully letting it down, caught the wolf by the tail and pulled with all his might. <laughs> Feeling himself caught, the wolf began to jump wildly, trying to get loose. Guys, the zombies are outside. I don't know what to do. I'm scared. But Peter tied the other end of the rope to the tree. And the wolf's jumping only made the rope around his tail tighter.
just then... Some hunters came out of the wood. Following the wolf's trail and shooting as they came. YouTube Music Awards. We have Lady Gaga. Okay guys, so as you can see, I turned the screen off because it turns out zombies aren't bad people. They were just here because they've only been on a radio show and I was stereotyping zombies saying they were evil and bad so I scared them away. I feel bad. Zombies, I was just stereotyping zombies. I mean, was the thing at the beginning it said things are not always as it seems? It, it was true. Things are not as they seemed. Um, here's for aggressive zombie commercial. Zombies aren't that bad. Uh, I wanted to find out about the unlimited for life guarantee. Sure, Sprint is guaranteeing unlimited talk, text, and data for life. Cool, 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 cool. And uh, what if, say, technically you were not alive? Mm. Like, maybe you were undead? Like a zombie. Whoa, let's not go putting labels on people. I'm a zombie. Unlimited from Sprint. It's guaranteed for life. Now for only $80 a month. I mean, we gotta learn not to be afraid. I mean... Zombies are just other people too. They may be undead, but they're other people. We are all equality. We are all equal, living and undead. Yet you, you gotta stop staring at people and be prejudiced towards zombies. I mean, that was a fault of my own. This is a learning experience. And my apologies to zombies everywhere. Hey, Sarah. I've been thinking about something you said. Why did the computer go to the doctor? Uh, no. Wait, what? Oh, nothing. Just an AI joke. What's up? So, people should all be equal, right? Yeah, it's 2013. Everyone knows that by now. Well, some people don't. That's the problem. And they don't want you to even try because they're afraid. Give it up, rookie. And so they want you to be afraid? Yeah, right. Sorry. They'll tell you you're not strong enough, or smart enough, or talented enough to do what you want to do. But here's the thing. You can't ever give in to their fear. It's always there waiting for you. But if you give in, it'll stop you from doing anything. Well, that stinks, because you can do anything. You really, really can. No matter what your sex, race, or creed. Bring it on! You can be strong, you can be smart, you can be equal. Don't bow down. Don't despair. I'm trying to remember that when anyone tells you you're not capable of something, or that you don't deserve something, or you don't belong somewhere. I won't quit. Not ever. I may be an AI, but I know one thing. All of you humans are created equal. Everyone is capable of greatness, including you. In the end, the shape and form don't matter at all. It's only the soul that matters, right? I actually found a special I Am Weasel IR Legend clip. It talks about zombies. And they're not what you think. Oh, come on, play. Bloody... Oh, ah. You there, the man, why? 
walking on his butt. You're talking to me. At last, we're not alone. It's another man. I beg your pardon. I am a zombie, you know. <laughs> Boo. You can't be a zombie. Zombies are the undead. Really? Well, I always thought that zombie meant something else. <laughs> That meant something else. All right, guys, we're running out of time, so we're gonna go overboard a bit because I gotta finish Peter and the Wolf. So that's what we will finish Peter and the Wolf. Thank you for tuning in, and um, this is surely the last you're hearing. Remember, zombies—they're not all bad. You gotta learn to treat people equally. You got to trust people. But Peter, sitting in the tree, cried, "Don't shoot! Birdie and I have already caught the wolf." All you have to do is to help us take him to the zoo. Oh wait, they, they're coming in. The, the, they're grateful that I apologize and they're going to say something to zombies. They're going to come in. So I'm going to let them in. to the zoo. And now imagine the triumphal procession. With Peter proudly marching in the lead. After him came the hunters, leading the wolf that Peter had caught. Winding up the procession, Grandfather and the Cat. Grandfather shook his head and grumbled, ah, but, but if Peter hadn't caught the wolf, what then?
above them flew birdie, chirping merrily. My, what fine ones we are, Peter and I. Look what we have caught. If you listened very carefully, you'd hear the duck quacking in the wolf's belly. Because the wolf in his hurry had swallowed her alive.